find a stool at at 8.30 in the afternoon, at night. So, so, where I went and picked up Nene, there was a Ross there. And I just went there, honestly I went there to get uh, some kids toys. So when I was getting the kids toys, right? I went in there, she was still working, this is like, okay, okay. So, I had to use the restroom, so I went back to Ross, I found a stool for 14 bucks. <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord, so I understand what you're trying to do. You're going to be a good stool. Why? If you can turn to your, your Bible, to Matthew, the 16th chapter. 13 to 20. We're going Now, we understand 
In the Old Testament, they were as God as the outside into the children of Israel. Do we agree with that? The gospel, God only expressed himself through Jesus. When Jesus walked this on earth, he was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. So, the gospel is not the New Testament, but nor is it the Old Testament. They was called the gospel. That's how the Bible is on. The Bible is on the Old Testament, the gospel, and the New Testament. But in the New Testament, God expressed himself through the church. God only can express himself through the church. As God expressed himself through the children of Israel, as he expressed himself through Jesus Christ, he expressed himself only through the church. That is what we call the New Testament. Jesus said, drink of this blood. This is the New Testament. Now I understand there's a difference. When people read the New think of New Testament, they think of Matthew through Revelation. But the Bible referred to the New Testament as after Jesus, not after the death of Christ. That's what the Bible teaches us. To That's not. You have to understand that. And the reason why I'm asking that question because when Jesus asked this question, who do man say that I am? They were looking for the Messiah at that time. They were looking for someone to come. And they was confused of who Jesus was. You know, everybody has their own perception of how God is going to come, or what God is, or how the church is. Or, and sometimes when you have, in that day, there are people that love John the Baptist. They thought John the Baptist was preaching on repentance. So when they thought John the Baptist was preaching on repentance, when they saw Jesus, they saw John the Baptist. So they said, that's the spirit of John the Baptist. There was others that saw Elijah, which we call, considered as the greatest prophet, correct? He's one of the, he said, in fact, Elijah did not even see death. He was carried up in a chariot of fire. So when they saw Jesus, and they saw the boldness of Jesus, they said, wait a minute, that can't be, that's not John the Baptist, that's Elijah. And then there was others that saw Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. And then there was others that saw other prophets. So there was a confusion of who Jesus is because they saw so many of the, of the old prophets in him that he became confusion. Now who is he at 30 years old and they see all this in this one man? And the reason why when people have preconception of what God's supposed to be or how God's supposed to look or how God's supposed to act and they see it in Jesus they made that true, that partial truth as the full truth. So when Jesus asked, who do man say that I am? It's what they saw from the outside expression of who Jesus was. So when Jesus, so Jesus goes and says, now who do you, the people that's supposed to know me, who are you saying I am? See, because it's not important what the world say that the church is. But I do really think it's more important than what the Christian is saying the church is. Because if the world, the world see the church from the outward expression. But if we don't know who Jesus is, if we don't know who, what the church really is, then, the, then we cannot expect the world to know what the church is. Do we agree with that? Are we in agreement on that? Amen. So Jesus goes to his disciples and says, and who do you say, whom do you say that I am? How are you, who are you telling the people 
that I am. Do you understand who I am? And Peter says something. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I think it's very unique. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Wait a minute. His name is not Jesus Christ, but his name is Jesus the Christ. His name is not Jesus, his name is not Jesus Christ, but it's Jesus the Christ. In other words, he is the Messiah. She yeah, had, don't worry. Don't you go outside the door. <laughs> and the reason why I say, the reason why I I, 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 I say that, do we understand what makes him the Christ? See, if I don't understand what makes him the Christ, then how can I confess that he is Christ? How do I really know in my spirit that he is Christ if I don't understand what is Christ? What does it mean to be Christ? The word Christ means the Messiah. The word Christ means the anointing one. The word Christ is the office that he holds. And he's the only one that holds that office. The funny thing about it, have you ever heard people, they talk about anointing, and they, they have anointing, they have anointing, they have anointing, they have anointing. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, there is only one that has the anointing, and that's Christ himself. Our anointing comes from Christ. But we don't have the anointing. It is Christ that has the anointing. When we understand everything God did, why he's the Christ? Because everything God did, he did it in his son, Jesus Christ. He did it through him. God has empowered him. All authority is given to him. All the Godhead dwells in him. So if we want to understand what the church is built off of, we have to understand who he is. Because if we build a church off of anything else, because he says, I will build my church, right? So this is his church, right? Am I, am I correct? I hope this is hope this is his church. <laughs> you know, so if the church is built off of him, we have to understand based off of what? It is based off of his anointing. What God has done, he God has empowered him, which he has empowered the church. So the Christ represents the power of God, the office of God. It's no different than just like they some people says, I'm a pastor. That's an office. But guess what? Pastor is not my name. It's just the office I hold. And sometimes people get confused with that and they, and they think because you're called a pastor that makes you something. That makes you greater than the members. That's just the office. That's just the office. Here is where I love to go. What makes him the Christ? All the righteousness. He is the only one that has fulfilled the law. He's the only one that saves us. Am I right? Am I, or am I preaching something different? There is no other righteousness that we can stand on but on the name of Jesus Christ. He's the righteous of God. He's everything. When I say all of God dwells in him, 
Do we understand what that means? All of God dwells in Christ. That means the righteousness of God. How many, how many people want wisdom? How many people want wisdom? You want wisdom? You want God to you? How many people want knowledge? Spiritual knowledge. How many people want patience?
We put everything before the church. Because we have made the church now a religion place. I don't need this a lot. There are there's people who think they are so spiritual and they go and they say, well, I want Jesus, but I don't want the church. How can you have Jesus outside the church? I've not understood that yet. Because if I understand what the book, what the Bible says, I understand what this says, this tells me that the church is the fullness of God, of Jesus. It's his body. That's what the Bible tells me. Let me make sure I'm on the right track because, you know, I can just say something, you know, anybody can just say something that just to say it, right? Let's go to Ephesians. To make sure that I and what I'm saying is true, because I, you know, I'm about to write a burnout light bulb on the good days. So, you know, Ephesians 1. Matthew 16, verse 19. 
I think I misspoke. It says, whatever I bind in heaven shall be bound on earth, right? But what it does it say, whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven? What's first? What what get bound first? Heaven or earth? Earth. Huh? Earth. Earth. Why are they here? That don't sound right. Because you would think it should be heaven first, right? Either the Bible, either, either there's a mis misunderstanding here because, but the scripture did not say that. It says, I will give you the key to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So you have to be bound on earth first before it can be bound in heaven. But that don't make sense. I, like I said, I'm about to pray for burning out light, but I, 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 I don't get it. I, 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 I might, I, you know, because I think it should be whatever is bound on heaven should be bound on earth. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> I normally turn it off. So. <laughs> but Jesus made this statement. So we know Jesus said, I have given you the keys. To so whatever you bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. But that we loose here first. It has to be loose here. It got to be loose here. It got to be bind here. So when people, when I say, when I, why I'm saying that, because when people talk about the purpose of the church, they don't see the authority that the church has. They don't see what the church is called to do. The church, the purpose of the church is to carry out the ministry that Christ has already started. When Jesus was on earth, whatever he bound on earth, was it that wasn't already bound in heaven? When Jesus, could Jesus, whatever Jesus bound on earth, was it bound in heaven? It wasn't. If Jesus says, if Jesus says you are delivered, are you delivered? Yes. Why? Because all authority is given to him. Correct? Right? Because he, whatever he does, it does not, he does not go against heaven. All he does, he preach what is in him. You see what I'm getting at? So what he does, when he says, whatever is bound on earth, it will bound in heaven. What, what that means is, what I am going to share, what I am going to do, is what's already been done in heaven. Now it's being manifested on the earth. That's what Jesus did. Everything he did, was in the will of the Father, correct? Mm -hmm. According to his will. So whatever he did, but it had to be bound on earth first to be released in heaven. The problem before that, it could not be released. Do you see what I'm saying? No one, who could release the will of God? Who could, who had the authority to release the will of God? Anybody? Jesus. Jesus. He was the only one, right? So, because he did that, now who now can release the will of God? The church. The reason why we don't see the power of God is because we're not acting in the authority of God. We cannot expect to see the book of Acts and we're doing what we want to do. It's impossible. We cannot, we have to bring ourselves into the submission of what the church is. And I say this, and I say this once, and I say this a thousand times, I know my brother and sister understand what my brother said. No one is greater than the church. Just because you're a pastor, just because you're an authority, does not mean you have, you are greater than the church. The church belongs to God and God alone. He just put me in a position to oversee this portion of his church. That's it. That's it. Don't, don't, 
And my brother, you know, just <coughs> been knowing me for eight years. That's it. It's nothing. I am still a member of the church. There is not. So when I'm saying that I have to submit myself to the authority of the Holy Spirit. It is a for a church to be the church, they have to be spiritual. I'm gonna be honest with you. They have to be spiritual. They have to be, they have to come from the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I say spiritual, I am not talking about guru spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. That means when we say we are part of the church, we have to be part of this body. We cannot call ourselves a church and be separated from our other brothers and sisters. That's not a church. That's a social event. We identify ourselves as one in Christ. That's what makes it a church. And the reason why God's really laid this in my spirit is because he was showing me, he said, we have too many myths about what the church is. One, you think the church is a building. Two, we think church is an organization. Or an institute. I mean, if I'm wrong, please, please tell me I'm wrong. Some people, when we say, oh, I go to church. Well, I go to, I'm not going to use organization name, but I'm part, I am so-and-so. I'm so-and-so. I'm so-and-so. And I correct them. I say, no, you're a Christian. There's one uh, institute that won't even say that they're a Christian. And I have to correct them. The same blood that saved you is the same blood that saved me. There is no difference in the blood. The same body that, that was risen from the dead for you is the same body that was risen from the dead for me. There is no two bodies. There is no two Christ. Christ is not the body. So when we say we are this and we are Paul, we are of Cephas, we are of uh, Apollo, or we are of Christ, Paul says, is the Christ the body? If we don't identify on what we are and who we are, we would never understand what, I'm sorry, if we don't know who we are, we can't understand what we are. And that's where the problem comes into today's Christianity. So now when we're trying to be a witness for Christ, we're not being an effective witness because we don't even know who we are. tell people that you can be free from sin if I don't believe it? How can I tell people you can be saved and I don't know what salvation really is? I just don't. So the church is to be the expression of the body. We are the expression of who Christ is. We carry the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what the church is supposed to be. That's what the vision of this church. It's not to just to gather people. I can care less. I'm going to be honest with you. If it's just me, my kids, and that's it, then it's just going to be me and my kids. I don't care. If it's just me and my family here, and we just praise God, that's it. That's fine. Because, guess what? It's not about how many people come to the church. It's being a part of the right church. And the right church is being in body of Christ. When we were doing the website, the one thing that I think we wanted to emphasize, the only growth the spiritual growth. 
We're not in this for the numbers. We're not trying to make a mega church. We're not trying to get into the market. Let the world be the world, because the world's going to always be the world. We don't want to get caught up in tradition, but we don't want to get caught up in the contemporary. But we want people to understand this church, we want them to understand it is a growth church. It is a spiritual growth. If you are hungry for God, we ask, this is what we want, this, that's what we want. This brother knows me more than any of This is not something I just preach today. Eight years ago when you met me, this is the exact thing we preach. We want people to grow spiritually. So, the reason why the Lord lays in my spirit is for everybody to understand what this church is about. I didn't build this church. This is not my church. All I am is just a member of the church. All they are, they're just members of the church. That's it. There's no one greater than no one. We can grow together. We can learn together. The problem in the church today, we don't understand what it is to be spiritual. We have understand this as a business, and trust me, it didn't read one time, made this in my spirit because even I got caught up sitting in my office eight hours a day. And you can get caught up into the business side, which is only a 5% of the church that you miss the 95%. You miss the people, but you miss the most important thing, God himself. If we lose God, we lose everything. If this is not about God, then Jesus died in vain. What good did we have a group of people and no one saved? No one knows God. All we had was a social group. I'd rather have one or two, and they're growing, and they're up there every week telling me their experience about God. Then to have a group of people, and they can't even tell you what Galatians says. You know, you, you encouraged me uh, this week in your Facebook. Oh. That was a, that's what I love to see. That's the stuff that I love to hear. That tells me she spent time with God. And we can, we have to be so real. And we have to, every one of us have to look at ourselves. Because we got to be serious about that. I made a decision. I'm not going to force you no one. I'm going to put zip. I'm going to put food out. And you're going to either eat it or reject it. Either you grow, but it's your growth. It's not mine. My job is to feed. It's not to force. That's all my job is. He tells me, I lay the food out. Just like what I do, what I do at home. She put the food out. My wife lay the food out. Either you eat or you starve. But you're not going in, like I tell my oldest, my older kids, you're not going into that refrigerator and cook something else. If you can't eat what's on that table, then you starve. That's the way we have to be. That's the way we have to be. We're going to, this church, we want to see us grow. I'm telling you, it's spiritual growth that I'm concerned about. It ain't about the number. It's about being spiritual. Because the more spiritual, because here's what I learned. I've learned this. I've been doing this. How did I, what did I say, guys? This is not my first radio. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've learned. 
When you grow, guess what? You start telling people. You start helping people. The more you grow in Christ, the more you start sharing your, your faith with people. And guess what? You become an encouragement to other people. You are adding to the kingdom that way. To bring people into this church is not adding to the kingdom. But when you add to the real kingdom, that's when you see real growth. Because that's what Jesus did. That's the finish, that's the work we want to do. Or am I talking to a different group of Because that's the work that I want. <coughs> See, when, when we get finished, don't we want, don't we want God to say, good job, my good and faithful servant? Yeah. Or do we want the part of me I never knew? See, we can either be, good job, my good and faithful servant. Because when, and, and we understand the difference. When he came back, one was already ready and was saying, Lord, I did this in your name. Lord, I did that in your name. Lord, I did this in your name. Lord, I did that in your name. See, he was trying to justify what he was doing. And he says, depart from me, I never knew you. But the one that was up there busy working, so when he came back, he saw him working. He said, good job, my faithful He wasn't too busy trying to justify. He was so busy just doing. So when God comes back, I want to be up there still putting chairs together. Still helping brothers and sisters grow. Doing what I was supposed to do. That's what makes a good servant. Because I love, because I love God so much that I love the people so much. That what makes a good son. That what makes a, to me, honestly, that what makes a good church. That's the kind of church I'm looking at. People who are just hungry for God and just want God more, because that's what's going to draw people. The more you grow, the more people will see the change in you. Then you become a good testimony. You don't have to tell people. You don't have to have the Bible every everywhere you go. See, I want to be like that woman at the well. Let me tell you about a man that told me everything that I've done could just be the price. And what happened? What happened there? The whole town went to see Jesus. He took. The woman that probably the most outcast out of the whole whole town to evangelize to the whole town. And then they said that the whole town went just to see what well, this the Jesus. And then what did they say? They said, we came because you said, could this be the you said, let me tell you about a man that told me. They told me everything I've done. Could he be the Christ? Now we know that he is the Christ. See, when you come into contact with Jesus, you don't need me. You don't need me to cheerlead you. You don't need me to do nothing. You know why? Because you have it in yourself. You have Christ in yourself. And that's what the people need to see today. They need to see Jesus. They, all we, I'm going to be honest with you. I am tired. I am sick and tired of playing church. You come part of this church, you're going to hear this all the time. I am sick and tired of playing church. of sin, of going to church and you get there and you're ready to eat. Could you imagine you go to McDonald's? I can't I'm going to thank you Jesus. I'm going to use, I'm going to tell you guys a story. This is a true story. I work in North Island. I'm going to end it with this story. I'm going to leave this story. I work in North Island. 
And I used to work at night, at midnight. I go to McDonald's to order a hamburger. Go to the drive thru. You know what McDonald's told me? We don't have hamburgers. So I said, I want french fries. Yeah, yeah that McDonald's. <laughs> We don't have French fries. I said, well, do you have a, uh, a, uh, uh, what do you have? <laughs> yeah, I said, well, what do you have? They go, well, we have one fish filet left. One fish filet. And I said, okay. So I take the fish filet, I go. Well, I'm going to trust the uh, ATM card, right? You would think. Oh, we just only taking cash. <laughs> this is like 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Now, where I'm going, I'm going to get, I got to go and look, gotta go through and get cash to get one fish filet. Why do I say that? How disappointing is that? How disappointing going to somewhere and you're ready to eat and they don't serve what you, what you want. Have you ever been there? You go to a place and you, you, you're ready to eat, ready to sit down. And then there's nothing. Would you tell your friends about that place? Yeah, we, we, we can invite people, we want all your buddies to go, go there, you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 I mean, come on, let's be for real. Or would you go to a place, give you an example, uh, in it. I like that. I don't mind telling people about in and I'm one of their biggest advertisers for them. Because when you have a good experience at some point, you don't mind telling other people about that place. Because you want your friends to experience what you experience. I always use this. I know these three. You guys, I'm telling these some something. My wife fried rice. I don't eat no one's fried rice, but my wife fried rice. I'm my biggest advertisement of fried rice. And the reason why, because when I eat someone else, I judge my fr her fried rice with everybody else. And I get disappointed. It's like, nope, it didn't taste that way. It didn't taste it. Well, let me share something. With God. When you are so hungry for God, you don't want nothing. You can't just come with substitute. You can't come with just anything. And then you say, okay, now we're going to put a cross here and then we just call it a church and then, you know, but yeah, no, we, how was that church again? You know, uh, um, another time we use Jesus' name is uh, let's pray in Jesus' name and that's it. It becomes disappointing. It becomes so disappointing. It's like, I came here because you said you are a church. But what I found, it wasn't on Jesus. I found it wasn't nothing. That what hurts the most. And it can't only come from me as the pastor. It starts with me as the pastor. It starts with everybody. See, when people come here, they need to see Jesus in you. 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 That will make a church. That's what made the church. That will make the act. Secret and how it came about. They were all on one accord. There's no secret. 
I know everybody is trying to reintroduce Acts, reproduce the day of Pentecost, the reproduce the day of Pentecost. No, all you're going to do is be the church. If you can be the church as they were the church, you have to reproduce it. There's no secret in what it is to make a great church. Is there a secret in making a great church? Does anybody know the secret in making a great church? You know? You know? Yeah. Okay, if I tell you my secret, you can't. You gotta promise it. Okay? You know the secret of making a great church? Thank you. 